Hey, this is Henry Sackler, and you're listening to Mike Delivers with Mike Bisaglia. I have known Mike uh, since we were little kids in elementary school. We used to play a lot of sports together with a bunch of our friends. He was a very good basketball player. I, I always, when I think of Mike on the basketball court, I, I kind of think of Magic Johnson. Obviously, not the, not the same stature, but Mike was very good at passing the ball. And he always looked. He could have taken the shot, but he always wanted to, like, make the good pass for the good layup, you know, make other people look good. Need more Mike Delivers? Head over to Patreon.com or download the Patreon app and type in Mike Delivers. Get a full catalog of bonus podcasts like the one time Mike crashed his wife's 2007 Toyota RAV4, behind the scenes videos and more food reviews. Go to Patreon and check it out now. My name is Mike Paseglia. I'm 37 years old, and I use the Lawnmower 3.0. Use my promo code, Mike Delivers, all one word, and you can get 20% off plus free shipping on your own Lawnmower 3.0. What is the Lawnmower 3.0? It is a electric trimmer that cleans your ball hair. I recommend it, I use it, and it's helped my life tremendously. As a 37-year-old that's feeling bad about himself because he turned 37 and the age has turned a corner, the best thing I have going for me right now is the Lawnmower 3.0. Use my promo code, Mike Delivers, all one word, you get 20% off. You can even have mine. You can have my used Lawnmower 3.0. Welcome inside. Mike delivers from his wife's 2017 Toyota Round 4. Here's your host, Mike Baseglia. That's right. This is Mike delivers episode number 85, and I'm coming to you from my wife's condo. I think it's from 1998. It was actually built in Bloomfield, New Jersey. You can find this podcast where all major podcasts are found, including Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn. And of course, Apple Podcasts. And as I promised, if you leave a comment on Apple Podcasts, I will go ahead and I will sing that comment on a future episode. And kudos to all the boys and girls that did a fantastic job of leaving comments on my Apple Podcast section because I will read, excuse me, I will sing some of them at the end of this episode. So stay tuned here on Mike Delivers. This podcast has an extension. It's got a family. It's growing. And if you like what you're hearing here on Mike Delivers, head over to my Patreon page, type in Mike Delivers, and you get 79 bonus content from photos to stories from the road to food reviews to finding out how I crashed my wife's 2007 Toyota RAV4 It's all on there on the Mike Delivers Patreon page. And not to mention, of course, that time I got my wife's pantyhose on my eyes. Okay, what I mean is she puts pantyhose on me. I'm blindfolded and she feeds me food in my mouth. And I have to then guess what exactly I am trying to eat. It's a blind food taste test. It involves my wife's pantyhose. It involves sometimes tofu. And can I guess the food right? You can find all of that on my Patreon page. I highly recommend it. And I've had a lot of people get a little confused. What is the Patreon page? I don't understand how this works. What is this? Is this what the young kids are using? Yeah, it's what the young kids are using. What's what everybody's using? Patreon.com. Don't be a stranger. Mike delivers. Join. Get to see all of the extra bonus content and support my cat, Leon, and my son, which I can't say his name yet because I'm keeping it a surprise from one person. So uh, if you know, don't tell anybody. But yes, my wife and I are having a kid. So you can go ahead and support Leon the Cat and my son. Just go ahead and download the Patreon app. Shout out to the O'Brien Creative Group. They are the guys that created my sick-ass, incredible, amazing logo. Mike Delivers. You see it where you go to all my social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Mike Delivers Pod. O'Brien Creative Group. I love the logo, not because it's just amazing and looks great, but they have created for me brand identity, which is something that I will not take for granted. And I highly recommend for anybody that's out there starting a podcast, a small business, you want brand identity and the guys at O'Brien Creative Group, they have done that for me. So thank you very much. 
episode 85, I will get back to stories from the road. Yes, I'm going to tell you stories from shit that has happened to me on the road during a pandemic in the United States of America in Essex County, New Jersey. I have surpassed 1,000 deliveries. It has happened, folks. I have done that. Will I give you the story of a 1,000? Not quite yet. You got to stick around for a couple more episodes. I'll do that in a little bit. I'll get the story 1,000. But I've been on the road now, and there's been a lot of fun, wacky shit that's been going on. First of all, I have to say this before I get to stories from the road. It's fascinating to me because I had COVID-19 and now I'm back on the road and I'm clean. I'm good. I'm healthy. Everything is fine. Okay. Like I'm not in a, I'm not in a bad place. I'm like super immune man now. I can, I can go tackle this. I can take care of you that. I'm good. I can do well. But it is weird psychologically when you think about it and you're picking up somebody's minestrone soup and you're taking it to their house and you hand them the bag and everybody's like, be safe out there, young man. I'm going, well, I already had it. You don't tell these people this because that would be bizarre and probably freak them out. If I, you know, if if your door delivery guy, DoorDash dude, we won't use Uber here. If your DoorDash guy comes to your house and he hands you your food and go, hey, here's your low main. Just want you to know that I had COVID-19 two months ago, but I'm back on the road for you. It sounds a little spooky. Now, everything's fine. Everything's good. But I'm just, it's just like kind of in the back of my head, like that I had it. Like it was part of me. And I think that's, can be said for more than just doing deliveries. Like when I go and see family members, friends, it was there. It was part of me. But it's just like anything else. You know, like if you had the flu and then the flu left you and you saw somebody, it's the same idea. It's just obviously with this, it's a little different in the freaky nature of it. You know, makes you a little more scared and skeptical. But it is weird to me when I'm on the road and I'm sharing food with people that, um, you know, like, hey, at one point I had it. Uh, I can tell you I still have not stolen any food from anybody. It has not happened. It has not come close. Also, interesting pandemic notes, more of a broader topic and not really a story topic, but just the differences between people all over Essex County, New Jersey. You have some people that are like highly precautionary, leave at the door, take a photo of the food, show that the food got to my house. And really just want nothing to do with you and do everything to make sure that they don't see me, they don't, they're don't, they not around me, the whole deal. And then you have other people that just are like, don't give a flying fuck that this thing is even going on. They'll come out, they'll greet you, they're not in a mask, they don't have gloves, they take the food, they don't give a flying fuck. And it's just really fascinating from my end that you see people from both ends of the spectrum, people that are taking this really seriously, and then people that just say, fuck it, I don't care, or whatever their mindset is. I don't know if it's, I can't get in their head. I don't know why they're doing something that way, if they don't take this seriously, if they don't care, maybe they had it themselves. I don't know. I can't answer that question. I'm not exactly sure, but it is interesting to see both sides of it. Me personally, I'm wearing a mask, I've got gloves, and I've got hand sanitizer to clean the gloves. Um, What's been really difficult is boogers just accumulating in my nose, and usually I would like take a tissue and blow it out, but I'm not doing that right now during this pandemic. So whenever I'm done doing orders, the amount of boogers that have just accumulated in my nostrils is just incredible. I mean, an immense amount of boogers in my nose during these Uber Eats deliveries. Just fucking disgusting. I mean, really, just just disgusting. Uh, no exact interview about, you know, something that's happening or, or, or something going on or talking to a celebrity, but I do have an interview, and it is attached to one of my stories from the road. So... I'll tease that right now. I end up talking to somebody I had a delivery with. That's the tease. And it has to do with a guy going after a girl and trying to win a date back. That's right. I have an interview with a man who's trying to win a girl back. It will all make sense in a matter of moments when I tell the story from the road. But uh, I'm excited that I get to talk to somebody that I did a delivery for and see if he was able to reconnect with the love of his life. Yes, I'm going to tell a story where I'm a matchmaker. Mike delivers. Can I deliver a date? And an interview is attached with it. It will all make sense in a little bit. Uh, So that is coming in a second. But with all that said, it's now time 
for me to get back to Stories from the Road. So first, I have to say this to everybody. The orders during the pandemic have been non-freaking-stop. Order, 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 order. Ping, ping, ping. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Tip, tip, tip. I mean, it's just changed the way everybody's thinking right now. Uber Eats, DoorDash, etc. More people are ordering out. So orders have been coming in all over the freaking place. It has been nuts. And I've really been exploring restaurants that I have not been to previously. And that's a big deal. You know, I kind of got set in, I will say, pre-1000 days. The certain restaurants I would go to and you kind of got stuck on them. And maybe every so often you would go to a different place. It would happen. But I will say this, post um, a thousand and during this pandemic, I'm trying, or I shouldn't say trying, I'm going to new places I have never even been before because more places are getting on the app because they have to. And I've talked about this with people in my interviews. People aren't going to the restaurants anymore. You have to do Uber Eats. You have to do these certain businesses if you want to make money. So I picked up from a Chinese restaurant in Jersey City. Don't remember the name, have to be honest. But it's really close to where my parents live. And maybe one day uh, I'm actually looking forward to potentially trying this spot. So pick up from this Chinese restaurant. And it so happens that I'm going to Weehawken, New Jersey. And for those that don't live in this area, Weehawken, New Jersey is on the Hudson River and it faces New York City. So it's a beautiful views where you get to look out the Hudson, you get to see New York City. And these apartments that are on the water in New Jersey are gorgeous. They're really nice spots along the water where you get awesome views of New York. And it's like a cool, hip place to live. Very expensive. And some are nicer than others. So I picked up this Chinese food and I was driving it to a woman who lived in one of these uh, apartment complexes, community complexes on the water that was facing New York City. So I get inside the complex and I get to the area and she lives in apartment, let's say, 50. And there's steps to get to this person's apartment. You have to go up the steps. But it's an outside uh, set of steps to get there. And it says apartment 50. And I look at the sign and I see steps 31 to 70. Now, again, these steps are outside of the apartment complex. I'm not going inside. I'm not going in an elevator or anything like that. I just have to walk on an outside set of steps if I'm making that clear. So I see 31 to 70. And then I see on the back end another set of steps. Now, I didn't want to park the car exactly where 31 to 70 was because it was in a tough spot with other cars around me and I didn't want to block traffic. So I went another set of steps down. Now, it didn't say any signs. So in my conclusion, I said, all right, 31 through 70, this chunk of steps is still here. So I think I'm going to the right spot. So I walk up the steps and I'm about to hand the food to what I believe is this woman. And I hear her voice. I'm like, ah, yes. I've made it to the right spot. I'm in the right area. Walk up the steps, get up the steps, and I go to hand the woman a food, and I look up, and there's a man in his robe, and it's Ken Rosenthal, MLB insider for Fox Sports in the Athletic. And he stares at me, and I stare at him. I'm holding this bag of Chinese food, and I am locking eyes with Ken Rosenthal. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, nothing. I hear a woman go, Michael, I'm over here. It's Cynthia. I stare at Ken Rosenthal. I'm in my mask. He's in his robe. And I wanted to be like, why don't you ever respond to my emails to come on CBS Sports Radio? I didn't say that. I went down the steps, went back up the steps, dropped off the food, and moved along. I'm sure everybody listening to this has ventured out a little bit. And when you've gone into restaurants, it's just a different world. I'm saying like you personally are picking up food. You go into a restaurant and things have changed. Tables are bolted up. Chairs are locked up. You go in and there's nobody there. And it's super creepy. I went into a Thai restaurant in Bloomfield, New Jersey for a pickup. Walk into the door. There's nobody up front. There's nobody in the first half of the store. There happens to be two steps where you can go up to part two of the restaurant. And part two of the restaurant is just completely separated with a giant plastic covering. Almost like you're watching something from Stranger Things and you see the other people on the other side. You've seen the show and there's people in their bubble suits walking around. And I I took a glance and my eyes aren't that bad. But I said, I think... 
I think I see some people on the other side of this of this plastic bubble. And I was right. It was three kids. This isn't going to kind of sappy and sad. But it was three high school kids in a graduation gown behind a set of plastic having Thai food and having their own graduation party. Listen to this fucking story from the road. I went to pick up Thai food from a restaurant and there's a graduation party in a plastic bubble with three people and a couple parents as everybody is separated in these times. This is a story I never would have thought I would have shared from the road. I picked up the Thai food and moved along and I reflected a little bit. Could you imagine having a graduation right now where you're not allowed to be around your friends? It's kind of fucked up. But uh, it was cool to see a graduation party in a Thai restaurant where there was plastic that separated the place and kids in their cap and gowns. Welcome to 2020, people. Two-part story because it was a two-part delivery. So I picked up an order from Sonic. I'm starting to get a lot more Sonic orders. And the Sonic order had two deliveries with it. So what that means is you pick up two two pieces of food, two items from Sonic. You deliver one to person A. You deliver one to person B. So I go into the Sonic and I look at the orders and I look at the first person and it's a burger, some cherry bullshit slushy thing, and some fries. Okay, then I look at order number two and the person from Sonic ordered a bag of ice. That was it. They ordered a bag of ice. Nothing more, nothing less. So I walk in and I go to the person and I show them the order and I go... Yeah, this person's ordered a bag of ice. Is this common? They go, yes, this actually happens all the time. People will go to Sonic and they'll order ice. They don't want to go to the store. They don't want to go out to the gas station. They have ice delivered to them. And I didn't know this, but I got tipped off from a couple of good resources, including Josh Gutterman, who's a big Sonic ice fan They have the ice pebbles. Excuse me. He said his mom is a big fan of the Sonic ice and gets it herself. So apparently Sonic ice is famous. It's like this pebbly kind of ice. I think it's disgusting. I don't like it. It's not for me. I don't like ice in general. I definitely don't like the pebbly ice. But this is a thing that people get. So let's backtrack. I pick up the order from Sonic. I have the normal food order of unhealthy food that's going to make you fat and obese and taste delicious. And then just a whole bag of ice, like a giant bag of freaking ice. So, of course, do you think the bag of ice is order number one or order number two? Of course, it's order number two. So it's going to sit in my car and it's going to melt. So when I get the food, I have to go accomplish order number one. And I read the notes for this food and it says, hey, I'm in a hospital. (laughs) You can't come up to my room, but can you leave it with security? Okay, I guess I'll have to do what you asked me to do. That's the rules. It's stories from the road, right? I got to do what they tell me to do. So I take the food, and I get to this hospital, and I walk in, and I'm holding the bag, and I'm going, hey, this is for so-and-so. They told me I can't bring it to the room, but they want me to leave it with security. And the woman goes, I can't let you in here until you take your temperature. So I'm holding a bag of sonic food, And I walk into the hospital. The woman shines a light on my forehead. And she says, I have to see your temperature before I can let you in. And she takes it. And it was real quick. This wasn't under your throat like, or, you know, in your your butt. It wasn't like that. They weren't doing that. I wasn't like walking in with my food and like, I'm like, pull down my pants. Time to take your temperature. No. They just put a light on my forehead. She goes, okay, you're good to go. I was like, I was just kind of curious. What was my temperature? 96.4. I then said, oh, that's good to know. I actually had COVID at one point. She didn't laugh. Wasn't a funny joke. I I was just trying to be honest. Like, I just wanted her to know. I I don't know. There was something about me taking my temperature. I wanted to let somebody know, like, I've had this, and I wasn't trying to be funny. So it wasn't trying to get her to be laughing. I was honest. Anyway, they took my temperature. Everything was good. Put the food to the side. Dropped it off, left, got back in my car, drove off, whole bag of Sonic Ice, delivered it to stop number two, quarter of a bag of Sonic Ice, completely melted. 
So by far, my favorite delivery of the quarantine life is the one I'm about to share with you right now. Got an order to pick up a drink from Starbucks. I'm all the way out there, man. I'm not close to the Starbucks near me. I am far, far away. Get the order for Starbucks. I'm a little skeptical, too, to take the order because I don't know the rules of how Starbucks works. At first, I see this line to my right, and it's like 20 cars deep. I'm like, ugh, I don't want to fucking wait in a whole line to deliver somebody, pick up Starbucks and take forever. But I notice there's a line to the left for mobile pickups and Uber Eats delivery drivers like me. So I was like, ah. Deep breath. It's going to be okay. I can go to that Starbucks. I can go to the order. Go in. Pick it up. And it's You don't go in. It's actually outside. And they hand it to you. And there's a divider. Get the order. Get in my car. Swipe right. Ready to go for the delivery. Automatically, what do I see? A note from the person that wants me to do the pickup. And it says the following. Deliver to door. This is for, insert girl's name, I'm not going to say. This is for blank, blank, in the pharmacy, all the way in the back. She can't come out to you, so can you please walk it to her? Tell her I said I appreciate her for working during all this. Also, tell her to unblock me, please. Business, a pharmacy. Wait, unblock her, please? I must know more. I wrote, picked up order, and I'm on my way. He then replies with, thank you. I really like this girl, and I'm trying to win her back. My response, all right, I'm here to help. So I get this uh, this delivery, this drink for this man who's going to this girl to help him try to win her back, which is just fucking ridiculous. But now I'm like, oh, my God, I'm all in on this. I have to help. I have to make sure we can execute this and do this properly. I'm going to give this girl the drink. We'll see her reaction. Maybe she hates his guts. Maybe she's like, oh, my God, this is so sweet. I love him happily ever after. I don't know. We'll find out. So I get to the pharmacy. I walk back, and I'm like, excuse me. This delivery is for blah, blah, blah. It was sent from Mass. Uh, I'm sorry, but she's not working today. She's not here. Um, okay, well, I guess I can't leave a drink here because she's not there. I'll see you guys later. So, walk back outside, get outside of the pharmacy, and I give Maz a call back. And he goes, yeah, man, I don't, I I thought she was working today, but I guess she doesn't. Uh, Can you deliver it to her house? I go, Yeah, let's do it. I don't care. Whatever. I mean, I guess within reason, how far does she live from this pharmacy? He gave me the address. It wasn't that far. It was like 4.3 miles. I said, you know what? Let's do it. I'm going to now drive this, this order of this Starbucks drink, and I will find it. I will find her, deliver it to this girl, and drop it off. He goes, thank you so much. I'm going to give you the best tip ever. I'm like, you got it, man. Let's do it. So he gives me the GPS. I put it in ways. I drive all the way down to the new spot. It took about 12 to 15 minutes. Get to the new spot. Can't get into the apartment complex. It's a Sunday. It's completely locked. A woman lets me in. I get into this complex illegally. Then I call Maz. He tells me the apartment number, what it is. Let's just say it's 1234. I go in there, leave the Starbucks drink at 1234 and leave. He wants to tip me more money. He wants to tip me an obscene amount. Starbucks, excuse me, Uber Eats only allows a certain amount of money. So he gives me about 16, 17 bucks, which is an awesome tip. I really appreciate it. But then it's over. The drink's gone. She has it. Did she like it? Did she hate it? What the fuck happened? What's the end of the story? Is Maz with the girl? Did I help create a lovemaking match? Or did she take it and dump it down the stairs? What happened? Well, I got Maz's cell. And I reconnected with Maz. And I interviewed him. What happens? Do they fall in love? What made her leave him? What's the backstory? Is this something he's been trying to do? Is he trying to fall in love with her? Will they live happily ever after? Maybe they have a lot of kids by now. Or maybe she said you suck and you're the worst guy ever. What happened? My conversation now with Maz. 
about why I had to take that Starbucks to her, how these two fell in love, and if they're together again. Here's my interview with the guy I helped try to match make a Starbucks drink, my man Maz, and the lovemaking matchup conversation right here. I've got the man on the line right now, Maz Afganzada, who had me deliver the Starbucks drink, and I went over to this woman's house or to the apartment complex, dropped over the drink, and I'm hoping that to get some clarity now and Maz, if he was able to get her back, what happened from there. I am dying to know what happened moving forward. So, Maz, thank you for coming on the Mike Delivers podcast. No, of course. Thank you for having me, Mike. I really appreciate it. Let's get to it. I dropped off the drink. Right. What happened next? Well, honestly speaking, uh, I didn't hear from her for about two, maybe three days after that. So I thought, oh, man, it didn't work. I'll try again later. But uh, I got a message that said, uh, <laughs> it was funny. It said double AI and it, it was an order for sushi. So I was like, oh, okay, interesting. We're making some progress here. Order the sushi. And then uh, now we're kind of, uh, you know, I've had dinner with her a few times uh, since then. And uh, we'll see. We'll see where it's going from there. So um, wait, 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 what do you mean by double double AI for sushi? What does that mean? Explain that. There's to me. there's a restaurant in uh, Wayne, New Jersey that uh, she she like I guess she likes. So she she sent me the name of the restaurant. She sent me her order, and then she sent me a time. This is all a couple of days after you dropped off the drink. Yeah. And she just uh, you know she asked for that stuff and. Obviously, you know me. I, I complied, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah. Uh, ever since then, I think um, I'm working towards the right track. Uh, okay. You know, getting back to where uh, I need to be. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's, it's been different, honestly. Uh, I, I I think uh, that you know, dropping off the drink, and then uh, I I didn't text her or anything uh, along those lines. Right, because uh, obviously I couldn't. Uh, I'm blocked. <laughs> um, so it's just I kept doing that, Mike. And honestly speaking, uh, I believe you, you are the third <laughs> Uber driver I've had do that for me. And honestly, when I saw her, she said, "You're just being ridiculous. You just make yourself look like a fool." Blah mm. blah blah. And I told her point blank, and uh, I guess it's, this is just goes for everything in life. I don't care how I look. I don't care how I'm perceived. Because I know what I want, um, and it was her back. And uh, if I have to look like an idiot or some sort of ridiculous fool in order to achieve my goal, I'm willing to do it. <laughs> well, okay, so so many questions here, and if you don't need to go into the backstory of it, that's fine because it's your personal life. I'm gonna no, try and mind. do the best. Do the I best. Mind. I, I don't mind. All right, so two parts. One, you said you've done this with a bunch of drivers. Was I the first person that did this in the chain of dropping off deliveries, or where was I in that string? Honestly, I think you were maybe the fourth or fifth driver that's done that for me. But honestly, the the four or five that did it before you, Mike, I, I'll be completely honest. Yeah. Very rude, unprofessional. <laughs> did not did not give me the you know the clarity, like a sense that okay, it did actually get dropped off where it needed to go. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because right, right, right. It's kind of up in the air for me. You know, like how the hell am I supposed to know it's there? You know. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. So I know. So I with me, it. which was interesting, was I went to. Um, we stayed on the phone. Yeah, we, yeah. Ahead, but I went. Orig I originally went to her um to her Job. place to work, and she wasn't Correct. there that day. Obviously, I, my I assume you just you know you're trying to. I guess, took a shot. Get, yeah, shot in the dark. Guess her guess her schedule. So then I ended up going uh, to her where she lives. Did but, you then? So in previous orders, was it going to the it was place going? To work or the ha or, or where she lived? You're going to get a, a crack out of this. I actually, when I was having dinner with her not too long ago, um, you know, I, I had been doing this for some time now trying to win her back. Yeah. Um, and uh, she eventually told her coworkers, listen, if I'm not there, whatever he br drops off or <laughs> gives, you guys just enjoy it. And like, you know, I, I actually found that funny. I, I'm just happy someone was, you know, eating the food and drinking the drinks. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'm mm -hmm. glad it just didn't go to waste. Um. But, what other what other places besides Starbucks did you try? Now, when I I oh, delivered, what was the drink again? We got a strawberry refresher uh, yeah. with lemonade. Um, 
yeah, uh, the uh, the acai one or whatever it is. That, okay, that okay. What, what other what other what other spots have you, <laughs> you tried? You wanna, would you like to laugh? <laughs> I would love to laugh. I'm all about laughing on this podcast. Let's hear it. All right, I I started off with Starbucks, then I worked my way to uh, this place we used to eat at uh, called Salad Works in uh, Wayne. I, okay, I believe you've heard of it. Then I started yeah. shifting to Chipotle, then sushi. I just tried to hit all the bases. You know, I know right. the girl loves uh, her, uh, what is it, Chilean sea bass. So mm. I kept sending that over. And, uh, you know, eventually she found it in her heart to forgive a, an old fool. So I, ge- I guess, well, well, that leads to my next question. What the hell happened? Honestly, Mike, you're going to laugh. Because this is the stupidest thing I've I've ever done in my life. Okay. I I was just uh you know, she hadn't been answering me maybe in like it had been like six or seven hours and I was getting a little annoyed because she had that habit of just ignoring me and going on Instagram and social media, you know? That's why I refrain from using that stuff. I feel you. She yeah, she was totally into it. Now I I got a little flustered. And I knew the girl loved her Instagram. So I just, you know, a little little coping mechanism for me was unlike the photo. Okay? Mm. So okay. I unlike the photo, thinking nothing would ever happen. Wow. Now, yeah, it's just, it's so stupid, okay? I unlike that. And then I got a text message from her maybe, sheesh, uh, an hour and a half later, two okay. hours later, saying, why did you unlike my photo? Mm. And I was like, question mark, how did you know? She sends me a screenshot. She's been monitoring who likes her photos and stuff. Uh-huh. I thought that was a little weird, but okay. Now, Mike, I'm a good guy. I've never, I would never, never cheat on my significant other in any way, shape, or form because that's just wrong. Um, she got that into her head that I was maybe seeing someone else and I was unliking the photos to clear my trail. Mm. And like cold turkey, home homegirl decided... I don't need his number saved anymore. Block my number. Block me on Instagram. Block me on Snap. And just, wow. just like that. Yeah. This and this okay. was right, right around Christmas time. So I had already sent her her gifts and stuff like that through the mail because, who likes to drive and hand stuff, you know? Especially when I live in New York and she lives an hour half away. Mm-hmm. Just wouldn't make sense. How long did were you guys officially dating? How long were you about with nine each months? Other? How nine long? Months, nine months. Ten months. Something like nine. that. Nine months, and then so that just like social that. Me- that social media issue that you just talked about that was really the springboard to what created the problems that was going on. No, honestly, it, it there was no real issues. I guess for her, it was more like she's a little younger than I am. I'm about twenty six. She's twenty two. So for her, she's more in that stage of like, I, I want to enjoy myself, you know, do my thing, and I'm I'm more in the okay. I got to build the foundation of my life for the future, yeah. for the rest of my life at this point and i thought this girl was the one uh to do that with and i still do think that uh i'm a goo- gooey romantic at the end of the day mike and i'm mm. not afraid to say it i love it <laughs> yeah and uh yeah th- i was just trying to do my thing and uh, carve out a little piece for maz but uh you know as the saying goes man plans god laughs right <laughs> That's fair enough. So you're you're in Long Island area and she's in the New Jersey area, correct? Correct, correct. Okay, and then for people that are listening to this podcast that are maybe outside of that bubble of, of what we're talking about, that's a good, I mean, oof, with traffic. I mean, that could be like between an Mike, hour and three hours. You have no idea how many times I've just sat on the G-dub just staring oh. at the ceiling, wishing <laughs> I, I was 18 with a, a little weed to roll up <laughs> to pass the time. But like, you know, those days are long gone. <laughs> no, I, I understand. That can be a tremendous drive. So does she know the backstory to you? Does she know you're coming on this podcast? Does she know no, 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 any no. of that backstory? No, no, no clue to what's going on. I, I think she, she lives in that ignorance bliss that, you know, she doesn't see the things that happens behind the scenes. And, uh, well, you could have told, I mean, you, you didn't tell her any of the, like, well, no. this is what the delivery driver did. No, you know, no, how no. he ended up in this house when he originally went to, to, to no, my workplace. None of but that. I, I am seeing her Thursday, uh, this week, uh, God willing. And uh, I will actually bring this up. <laughs> I really oh wanted to see this. <laughs> well, we're recording this. I'll be completely honest, and we'll go behind the scenes with the audience. So we're recording this on a Sunday morning. This will be out on uh, Tuesday, so in a couple of days. So that means when you're on your date on Thursday, this will have already been released. So you could, if you wanted to, and I appreciate the downloads, you could send it to her to play. She of could course. listen to it. And then maybe maybe we could have an update in a couple of weeks on how things are going. 
No, for sure, for sure. I'm always with it. Uh, well, right now we're in that. Like, uh, I text her. She just leaves me on red and replies whenever she feels like. Mm. Uh, stage, which I totally get. You know, I, 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 I was in that in the beginning of the relationship too. So we'll see where it goes from there. Um, you know, when I got the order and I saw everything and I saw your notes, I mean, I got a jolt of excitement. Like, yeah, as, you did. As you as did. A, I wrote a, I wrote a paragraph. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is good. I'm going to take a screenshot of this shit. I'm going to save it, and we're going to go from there. And then, you know, like, to your surprise, when I found out that she wasn't at work, this was like, for me personally, I was like, this is great. The story continues. Where are we going next? And I have to be I have to be honest with you, man. You gave me my best tip that I've had in maybe the second – it's the second best tip and I, I ever I, got. I still feel like it wasn't enough. Uber wouldn't let me go exceed the – what was it, 17-something, I, I yeah. remember. And so I that- really wanted to give you a lot more because, honestly, Mike, I've never had any driver, and I've been using – I'm Uber Eats Platinum or whatever they, their highest ranking is. I've used them since the initial launch. I use them at the restaurant. I use them at my father's restaurants. They love me, and I love them. But I've never had a driver like you that went out of his way to make sure that what I ordered got to who it needed to get to. I, and I, I'll be completely honest. I really do appreciate it, and I wish I could have done more for you that day. But uh, I've never had anyone go that far. Uh, well, I, I, appre- I appreciate that. You did say you're a gooey romantic. So now I'm starting to feel the love here. I do appreciate that. It's of sentimental. That, that means a lot to me as an Uber Eats driver that's done a bunch of these orders because I like to go out of my way to help people. And I mean that because it's, it's, um, it's fun. It's part of the gig. And I, and I actually do enjoy that. And you, you tip me more than enough. But it is interesting that I guess Uber Eats put a cap, which I didn't really know about, on how much I, I didn't, you could. Right. Do, I didn't do know that think- either. Yeah, do you think it's um, – I mean, the order, it could not have been that much. I mean, if we were getting a drink from Starbucks, that could not have been a huge – I mean, probably yeah, what, it was like, seven, like, ten bucks? Yeah, it was like seven bucks. And then when I, I tried to type in like 35 on the tip, they said cannot exceed 17, which doesn't uh, make sense because a tip is based off service. It right. shouldn't be a percentage. It doesn't matter if it's 110 percent, 120. If the service is A1, Uber, and I know you're listening out there. Somebody in corporate is listening. Yes. You need to fix that. Because there's people like Mike out there that will, are willing to do things for their guys mm-hmm. that other people aren't. Like I had a driver, honestly, maybe two days before I, I got lucky and got you. Yeah. I wrote I, – I knew the gentleman was Hispanic. So I wrote my message, that little paragraph that you screenshot. I wrote that mm-hmm. in English. I wrote it in Spanish. And I didn't know if he was Hispanic. Maybe he was uh, from his picture and his photo. I'm sorry, his his name, I kind of assumed maybe some uh, Eastern European too. So I did write it in three different languages for the man. Wow. Yes. And guess what he did? What's that? He did not drop it off. <laughs> well, so what, he did not. He didn't. He, did, he, 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 did, he, did, nope. he picked it up and then I, I saw him going in a completely other direction. And I was like, wait, what the hell is going on? Wait a minute. He just stole the order? Yeah, he just took the drink and just went in a completely other direction. I think he maybe was going to pick up a different order, um, whatever the case is. On, I have had a lot of issues in the past with drivers not only doing Uber Eats but doing DoorDash as well at the same time, which doesn't make any sense. You know what uh, yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, I know a lot of people that do that is they try to maximize and make as much exactly. money as they can. I, mean, I, I personally a- just don't feel – um. I don't think no, I'm smart enough. I respect that hustle, but like, uh, that's a little crazy. You know what I mean? That's you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself to drop yeah, off. Yeah, you stuff. are. Well, <laughs> I, right. You, you can do it. You just got to make sure you do it um, right, and you don't Timely, take away yeah. from the other customer. Correct. 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 Then I'm okay with. It. I I personally don't do it because I'm like I don't know how the fuck I'm going to do this. I'm going to screw this up. I'm not going to be able to do this while it I'm makes no fucking sense. How are you supposed to fucking pick something up from Wayne, drop it off in fucking, uh, let's say. Uh, what is it? T-neck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you're supposed to pick something up in Tato and take it to wait. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> See, I like, I like it, man. I cursed once and then all of a sudden it opened up the floodgates where you're like, Oh, you can curse. Yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 really yes. I didn't know. I didn't know. I, no, I just, can. I don't want to be can. that guy. <laughs> you can curse. It's just, you know, just do it in the right way. If it feels correct, natural. Correct. Uh, well, Maz, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. I feel like I'll have to have you on again. Cause I feel like I could, I know I can pick your brain about you working in the restaurant industry and helping out, uh, maybe understand better the Uber Eats tendencies and maybe help me become a better driver. Uh, so, Maz, I do appreciate that. Thank you for giving me some clarity on the orders, what happened, the different places that you tried. Of course. And uh, I appreciate you coming on the Mike Delivers podcast. We'll reconnect in a couple of weeks and maybe get an update. As uh, I feel like I'm a, could I be the Uber Eats love matchmaker would be awesome. 
Hey, hell yeah, Mike. If you're ever in that vicinity, you're definitely going to be picking up something from me again. That's for sure. <laughs> so, so many layers to that. One, I have a new friend in Maz. Him and I are boys now. And I'll keep track of how he's doing with his girl. We'll see if uh, they become something more than just a couple of dates. But, you know, I, I he mentioned how great of a driver I am. And I'm not going to lie. I really liked hearing that. That's just how I feel I should do the job. I don't think, and I, and I do, you know, there is something that I knowing that I'm doing stories from the road that plays a part in that, that I want to make sure, like, um, I, I know when I'm in this moment with him on the phone, I've got a story from the road and I've got a good one and that there's something here and I know that. So I'm probably playing into it a little bit. But at the same time, I think even if I wasn't doing that, how could you not want to follow through and see what the fuck happened here? Like, I had to deliver this. Now, if she came out and was pissed, I, I would have said, I'm just, you know, I'm just here doing the delivery. But I had to find out at least, you know, what happened. So, um, you know, saying all of this, this is why I like doing this stuff. It's fun. It's fun doing all these crazy stories from the road and all these incredible different people that you get to meet. I think it's just, um, I think it's just really fun to meet these fun people. Like, I can't tell you the guys from the road I've met, the friends I've made. It's been awesome. Uh, it's been really cool. And, you know, here's an, an, another example of uh, somebody that's become a friend and a weird story. And we'll have to see if, you know, like if these two get married. I, I mean, clearly I have to be at the wedding. Like, that has to happen. Like, that is a must. Like, if these two get married, I have to be there. That That's a must. Like, if this if this thing falls, if these guys fall in love and it gets to the next level, like, I got to be there. I mean, that's going to have to happen. So... Anyway, it's been really refreshing. It's been really fun to sing my say my stories from the road. I'm getting excited as I say sing because, as I mentioned, I will sing the the uh, comments on Apple. I promise that if you leave them, I will sing them, and that is true. I will say um, a little tease here: big guests coming to episode 87. Uh, I'll say it now, and if it doesn't happen, who gives a fuck? Like if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I've got Adam Richmond. He's from Man vs. Food. Uh, you might remember the show. He's coming on Mike Delivers on uh, next week. We're recording a couple days after I'm I'm doing this, and he's going to be on the podcast. And I'm so excited to talk to him about this. I think it's going to be awesome. He's got a great personality, and I think nobody better for an interview uh, to talk about Uber Eats deliveries than Adam Richmond, who you remember from Man vs. Food. That's going to be a blast. Okay, so as I promised, if you leave a comment, I will sing your comment. And uh, that's the new rule. So I'm bringing up my comments. And the idea is here to leave me five stars. So go ahead, leave five stars, and I will sing the rest of them from here. So that is the deal. So I got a lot this week. So I'm scrolling back. Here we go. All right. Everybody ready? Time to sing. This one's from Andrew C. Boric. Unique concept and well, dot, dot, dot. Mike does an excellent job as an interviewer and insightful food reviewer. He has lots of interesting guests on the show. They all sound like they're having a great deal of fun. I highly recommend this unique podcast. This one's from Alf Season 1. Awesome podcast. Awesome podcast. This one's from MTR Rich. Good conversation. Mike is a top-notch interviewer. He makes all his guests sound like a million bucks. Love the food talk. Casual yet informative. This is from Vega29. Love the concept. Just found this podcast through a friend of mine. Instagram. Love it. This one's from PFM824. Funny and quality. Mike brings a unique perspective to his show, which is unlike anything else. Well, love, well done. This one's from Jay Berms, Tremendous Pond. Mike is hilarious. I highly recommend listening to each and every episode. Five stars for sure. For sure, sure, sure. This one's from Chris Sports Flash. Hilarious. This podcast cracks me up, and some of these guests are amazing. Mike is also a hero for some of the stuff he eats. Thank you, Chris. And finally, from MC Gen 27 Great podcast. Mike kept harassing me to give me a five stars. He wrote starts, so I'm going to say it like he is, because I know it'll piss him off. Mike kept harassing me to give me him five starts. I'm lazy, but I didn't. 
It's a great podcast if you like to talk and listen about food and sports and adventure. Give it a try. Give this a try. You'll thank me and everyone here later. That was probably brutal. I apologize, everybody, but that's what I have to do. That's the rule. That's how this bad boy works. So anyway, it felt really good to get back to my roots, do some stories from the road that will continue. Episode 86, by the way, will drop on Thursday as my wife and I... Taco Bell month is over. Thank you, God. It is gone. The new and improved food tasting for the month of July, seafood from chains. We'll be trying seafood from different chains. If you got some ideas, I feel like I should be singing everything now. If you got some ideas, email me, mikedeliverspot at gmail.com. No, I'm not going to do that. Well, I will do that, but I won't. I will stop singing. Email me, MikeDeliversPod at gmail.com, or DM or tweet me, Mike Delivers Pod, or DM DM me on Twitter or Instagram. Give me some recommendations and my wife, and we will try them. For example, if you're like Mike, you've got to go to Applebee's and get the full, and get the surf and turf. Well, I mean that's surf. I'll have the surf, and we'll try it. So just let me know, and then we'll give you a shout out. And that's how the Mike Delivers Pod works, and that's how it grows. So thank you, everybody. It's been a lot of fun doing stories from the road. I had a kick out of doing this tonight. I'm recording this from my wife's condo. I guess we kind of both own it, but I'm going to give her full full credibility. I'm trying to see. My cat was here, but I guess he left. I don't know where he went. Leon was with me recording this, and he said, this shit is boring, and he's gone. Now I'm in a real singing tunes mood. Maybe we'll have to bring singing back to this podcast. I haven't done that. And Oh, my God. Remember when I used to sing in the beginning of these podcasts? I guess that was episode... Shit, I can't remember now. It's been a long time. Anyway, the singing is over, but um, it was fun while that lasted. So this has been episode 85. I want to say thank you to my man, Maz. Thank you to all the people for helping this podcast grow. Five-star people, grow, grow, subscribe, download, continue to share the, um, the, the, the dream, the dream that I have of doing this. So please continue to share it. Uh, again, patreon.com. Mike delivers. You can get a full catalog of unbelievable more content. My wife and I do food reviews, stories from the road, how I crashed my car, blind food taste testing. It's four dollars a month. If you can't afford it, you probably if you can't afford four dollars a month, I am sorry, man. Like we gotta get some do not if four dollars is hurting you, do not download this the Mike Delivers podcast on Patreon. Like now I'm like, don't do it. It's just like I love this. But I want to make sure everything's good. You know, everything's good with the family. So don't do that. But if you can't afford it, please check it on out. The music you hear is from Beautiful Noise. This podcast would not be the same without them. They are the soundtrack to the Mike Delivers podcast. This has been episode 85. We'll see you next week. We'll see you Thursday for what I like to call episode 86. I'm your boogeyman, that's what I am. I'm here to do whatever I can. Be it early morning, late afternoon, or at midnight. It's never too soon to want to please you. To want to please you. To want to please all fall for you. Oh yeah, I want to be your your rubber ball. I want to be one, yeah, most of y'all. Oh, yeah, I'm your boy. Oh, got a little ahead of myself. Of course, I'm your boogeyman. I'm your boogeyman. Turn me on. I'm your boogeyman. I'm your boogeyman. Do what you want. I'm your boogeyman. I'm your boogeyman. Turn me on. I'm your boogeyman. I'm your boogeyman. Do what you want.